Hello YouTube and welcome to my first video in a very long time. Um, this here is the Acer Swift 5 15 inch and I have had this computer for 8 months approximately and I'm just about to sell it. Uh, but before I sell it I thought I'd give it a quick review because it is actually kind of pretty nice computer and it serves better than just be forgotten. So here's a quick review of the Acer Swift 5 15 inch. So uh, this here is my iPad Pro and this is my 12 inch Retina MacBook uh, 2017. This is the 11 inch iPad Pro. Uh, these are the things that I carry with me when I'm traveling, and they are very good. They are small, they are lightweight, and reasonably powerful. I can use my iPad Pro to do video editing and stuff like that, and when I'm editing text, I use my MacBook. Quite happy with these, but in uh, January I was traveling to New Zealand for 12 days and whenever I'm gone that long I can always kind of get the niche to do some light coding and it uh, turns out you can't really do any proper coding on the iPad. You can but it is difficult and it's you know online and it's not very good. Uh, of course on the MacBook you can do anything really but the screen is really tiny and this version uh, is not very powerful so no joy. So when I got home from, from uh, New Zealand I really wanted a laptop that I could do some proper development on uh, and I did a ton of research. Uh, I had a couple of things that I wanted. Uh, first of all, I wanted it to be bigger screen than 12 inch. I wanted it to be a proper computer and not a tablet. And I wanted Windows because I kind of feel more at home doing stuff on Windows. And so, you know, 15 inch lightweight was also good because I wanted to, to use it for traveling. And this is what I found. Actually, this is not what I found. First I found the LG Gram, but the LG Gram is not available in Sweden. So uh, I thought I'd order the LG Gram from Germany. But before I did that, I wanted to, you know, check out the size. So I found this, the Acer 5, Swift 5, 15 inch. It was, it was available in Sweden and no one really reviewed this uh, as far as I could tell so, so I went out and I just wanted to, to you know, get a feel of it. Turns out this particular version was on sale because it was an open box so someone bought it and returned it and I got it 15% off. With that 15% off it was actually a steal at just about 1000 euros or equivalent, uh, I think 10,000 Swedish kroner. So it was pretty cheap, so I just, you know, I bought it then and there without actually knowing much about it. So, but if you look at the specifications, it's actually pretty good. This is the entry model, so it's available in more expensive versions, but this is the uh, one with the Core i5 8265U uh, CPU, so that's uh, 4 cores, 8 threads at 1.6 GHz. No speed demon, but still 8, eight threads is, is pretty good. This has got 16 gigs, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory that's soldered on, you can't expand it, but it's you know, 16 gigs, that's pretty good. It's got 250 gigs, 
256 gigs SSD, which is also uh, soldered on so you can't take it out, but there is an extra M2 slot so you can add another SSD if you want to. The screen is 15.6 inch, full HD, highly glossy touchscreen. High gloss, not great. Touchscreen, I kind of like, but, but you know, high gloss is a bit annoying. It's said to be 300 uh, something something per square meter of light brightness. It's pretty bright, it's not blisteringly bright, but it, it's pretty bright. Uh, the CPU's got the Intel 620 EU HD graphics. So that's not very good. If you're going to do gaming, uh, it's not very good. It's got a HD camera, who cares. Full keyboard, backlit keyboard. It's a bit annoying, the keyboard, because it has these extra keys on the, uh, the far right. So instead of if you're typing and you go, I want to hit enter, every now and then you will instead hit page down, which is very annoying. You get used to it, kind of, but I always, you know, even though I use this quite a bit now, I still mistype every now and then because the keys are in the wrong place. It's got basic speakers, Dolby Audio, and there's a microphone in there, it's got Wi-Fi and, you know, all the usual Bluetooth stuff. It's got a fingerprint reader, uh, which actually works pretty well, so you don't have to log in, you just, you know, use your finger to, to log in, and, and that works. So, yeah, it's pretty good. 54, 54 watt-hour batteries, which they claim is good enough for 10 hours. Is it though? Hmm, we'll get back to that. Now, the first thing you notice when you take this computer out of the box is the weight. It weighs absolutely nothing. The first time you pick it up, you would be excused for thinking that there's nothing in it that is actually empty, uh, just a, a you know plastic box. But it is a computer and it weighs 994 grams, which is pretty amazing that they can get it down that much. Uh, it is sturdy enough. The screen will flex if you bend it like this, it will flex, but it, it feels sturdy. The hinge is pretty good. Uh, the keyboard is not extremely flexible, but it does flex a little bit. And um, the trackpad is okay, but no more. Other than that, you got on this side, you have a USB Type-C port, uh, and it will charge via USB Type-C, but it will not run on USB Type-C. You've got two USB Type-A ports. One of them is powered so you can charge things, your phone for instance. You've got a full HDMI port, which is nice to connect it to your screen. And then you have a barrel connector for the uh, power supply. On the other side you have one of those Kensington lock things and a headphone port and that's it for ports no more ports on the underside you have a bunch of screws that you can undo if you want to you know open it up these are torque screws and I have a bad experience with trying to open computers with torque screws so I haven't done so with this and on the lid there's nothing so performance wise uh, it does have a Core i5, uh, it's not, you know, a monstrous performer, but the 16 gigs of RAM and the big screen and the SSD, it's fairly nice to work with, actually. When I benchmark it, I get 4542 uh, for single core and 14544 in uh, multi-core in Geekbench 4, which is about you know 
on par with the previous generation of iPad Pro. It's smoked by the current generation of iPad Pro, but it's pretty good compared to the old ones. Uh, in Cinebench, I only get 1058 in Cinebench uh, R20, so that's ugh, not very good for multi core, uh, really. Um, Cinebench is one of those things that really likes a lot of cores. Uh, gaming wise, it's not great. Uh, Tomb Raider, the old one, well, not the old one, but you know, the reboot. Uh, full HD, native resolution, normal everything settings. You get an average of uh, 25 frames per second in the built-in benchmark. If you lower the, the settings to 1366 by 768, so kind of HD-ish, you get about 50 frames per second, which is playable, but it's it's really not that good. The battery life is a bit of a mixed bag here. They claim that it's 10 hours. It's not 10 hours. This claimed to be 10 hours, and it is 10 hours. The iPad is really good at that, but Windows machines usually don't get anywhere near the, the claimed battery life. This one, out of the box, I got maybe seven hours of uh, you know normal use. If you game on it, that's gonna lower it considerably. Uh, now there was an issue uh, when, I, when I first got this out of the box that Acer had this really, really tough power management, which I am assuming was to, to get more battery out, life out of it. Uh, and gaming without the, the power connector in was just not doable, because it turned off everything and you couldn't really do any kind of heavy lifting with it at all. So I went online and I found a registry setting that allowed me to change the power management. So that's what I've been running with most of the time. That reduced the normal use battery life to about four to five hours. So almost half the battery life. Uh, and if you're gaming on it or doing, you know, heavy work like Photoshop or video editing, battery life would go down to one and a half to two hours, so not great for battery life. Now the, the as I said, the computer will charge over USB-C, but it will not draw the necessary power from USB-C to actually run the computer. So if you're running the computer and you connect it via USB-C, it will discharge uh, while you're using it. Uh, you have to plug in the barrel connector to, to charge it while in use. USB-C will charge the laptop slowly, but if you leave it overnight it will be charged in the morning. So, But the weakest point with this laptop is clearly the, the battery life. It, even with the, the really heavy duty battery management settings that Acer had, uh, it's still not very good uh, and if you have that on you can't really use it for power usage. Uh, then you know you could just check emails and write uh, write you know essays or something. And if I want to do that I can do that with this and I don't need this big screen and everything. However uh, since I'm gonna sell this I did a complete reinstall. I wiped it uh, and uh, you know reinstalled it and this time around there doesn't seem to be a problem with the power when I'm on battery so I'm guessing that Acer has actually changed uh, the, the power management that's on by default in the BIOS somewhere because there have been various BIOS updates 
during the time I had it and now when I start fresh uh, I don't have to do the registry hack so they seem to fix that so that's that's nice uh, it's possible that the battery life is better now than it was when I tried this first uh, but still battery power is still battery life battery life is still the biggest issue of this uh, laptop why am I reviewing this laptop moments before I'm gonna put it up for sale well, the, the reason is that even though it has a number of flaws uh, mainly with the battery life partly with the weak graphics and the annoying keyboard uh, it's still a really good laptop but it doesn't fit my workflow that's why I'm selling it I wanted to do you know development coding while I'm on the road and I found that the MacBook and the iPad couldn't really do that for me so that's why I bought this turns out I don't bring this along with me as much as I do the other things not that it's heavier it's actually this one is almost as light as this 12 inch and you can see the difference in size here so this one 970 grams this 994 the reason I don't bring it along is one battery life two size and of course size was one of the reasons I bought it but it will not fit nicely into my bag that I use um, and I, I could get a new bag obviously but I like my bag I bought it specifically because it's so small that even if I pack it full it will always fit as hand luggage on any major airline that I've tried uh, so I don't want to buy a bigger bag just to get this computer with me and also on shorter trips I don't really feel that much like like programming so I don't miss the ability to program that much and when I'm home I'm just going to use my desktop I'm not going to use this laptop so the laptop doesn't fit into my my workflow and it's a shame to just leave it lying around because it is a very good laptop so I'm hoping that someone else will pick it up and be very happy with it a student someone who needs you know to do uh, both typing up stuff and doing science work for on it you know with the with the Photoshop or whatever uh, Excel I don't know it's got the power to do a lot of stuff uh, and it is still portable enough to to bring with you even if you can only sit for a couple of hours in the coffee shop doing stuff with this uh, it's still I think a great option for a lot of people so I'm hoping someone will buy this used laptop from me and I'm hoping that you had uh, at least some help from this uh, video uh, I can wholeheartedly recommend the the Acer Swift 5 15 inch uh, I believe that this particular model is not for sale anymore in Sweden there's probably gonna be a, a newer one with uh, possibly with the new chips from Intel but it's really good it's really light it's a 15 inch laptop with uh, good memory, good CPU, good SSD for just a thousand or so euros or US dollars and it weighs less than a thousand grams, 994 grams. That's pretty good. So that's everything. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.